Hi, everyone, and thanks again for coming to another Authors of Google event here in the San Francisco office. Today, we are very pleased to have Dan and Corey join us. They are the co-founders of RecordSetter.com. Dan has actually come back to San Francisco, where he used to be a denizen, and he's a world record fanatic since the age of 10, and is, a, and is proud to have set 11 Record Setter world records. He's less proud, however, that 10 of them have been beaten. Uh, former advertising exec who created two Super Bowl ads, Dan, Dan now resides over in Brooklyn, but we won't you know, hold that <laughs> Uh, Corey's an entrepreneur who's been working in web development since 1967 and proudly holds 1967 and proudly holds the world record for the longest time to watch Amazing Horse while working. You can hear more about that hopefully today. Uh, Corey also lives in New York City. Uh, they're here to talk about Record Setter, which is a new book that they've come out with which celebrates over 300 of the loudest longest, slowest, weirdest, and coolest, and most difficult to break records ever set. Please join me in welcoming Dan and Corey. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Can you hear us at the back? All righty. Uh, my name is Dan. This is Corey. Uh, thank you, Nick, for, for having us here, and thanks to all of you for coming. Um, so we're going to be talking about world records. Um, I always like to say this project began when I was 10 and got my first Guinness Book of World Records and just fell in love with the co whole concept of world records. Uh, it was just this amazing book that you could pour through and see all these amazing people around the world who were doing just such outrageous, extraordinary things. And I just love this sentiment of, you know, with billions of people on this planet, I love the idea that, you know, these people were actually the world's best, the number one in a particular area. So um, I always just said, I, you know, I want to be a world record holder someday. That just seemed like a cool thing. So I was a 10-year-old boy, and then I went off and, and in college, got a little more serious about it, and started researching setting a Guinness record, and once tried to woo a girl with, um, I tried to, uh, my, to have a go at ravioli eating. I thought, because <laughs> I kept looking through the book, I was like, what can I be good at? And I thought maybe I could be a speed eater, but. I A, realized that I'm not a very fast eater, and then B, she, she was totally unimpressed by this. So, um, but, um, but, you know, but my love for world records continued, and then, as Nick mentioned, I uh, have a previous career in advertising. I was a, a creative uh, working, my last full-time job was at Goodby Silverstein here in San Francisco, and uh, I came out here in 2002 and, and went out with some friends to Burning Man Festival. Any people who've been? All right, cool. Uh, woo, woo. Um, so, you know, went out to Burning Man, totally intrigued by it, had my mind blown away by just, you know, mass creativity, um, people pouring their heart and souls into all these amazing projects, none of which were related to commerce. Like, these were just, you know, things that people love to do, and that ranged from dance and performance and art and, music and on and on and on. And so I, I was just super excited by, you know, what was happening. And after going for a couple of years, just felt more and more this desire that I, I was going and taking it in, but I really wanted to build something. That's a big part of the Burning Man spirit of like, build something and pour your own energy and heart and soul into the, into the entire community and experience. So um, some friends and I, had a, a dinner uh, in the Tenderloin at, um, it's a little Thai restaurant on a corner, I forget the name of it, but we just sat down and we're like, all right, we're going out for dinner and we need an idea for our Burning Man camp because, you know, deadlines are getting close and we want to do something awesome. Um, and a bunch of ideas were kicked around, but, you know, I brought up my love of world records and I was like, hey guys, why don't we create a world record theme camp and we'll just figure it out and we'll just let people set world records and we're Burning Man world records. Um, it was a very loose idea, but you know, finally everybody kind of rallied around it. We called ourselves the Playa Book of Records and um, went off to the desert. This was in 2004. Um, went off to the desert. Uh, somebody had suggested as an homage to Wide World of Sports that we wear yellow jackets. Um, they were not nearly as fancy as these. These were like going off to thrift stores and going on eBay and just finding yellow jackets because you'll see it, you don't see these very often. They're they're hard to find even even uh, on the internet. So 
Um, we just went off and we just wore yellow jackets and said, we're the Playbook book of records. Does anybody want to set a world record? And it was just a very open brief. Um, and um, people came up and were like, anything? Like, it doesn't have to be something that Guinness recognizes. It doesn't have to be something that you guys decide whether it's cool or not. And we were like, no, like, just set a record. We're going to document it and we're going to make you a world record holder. And we would see feats. We can show you some of these videos, but we'd see feats like the, um, the fastest accordion rendition of The Devil Went Down to Georgia. And then a woman came up with a, with a super deep innie, and she set a world record for the most blueberries fit in a belly button. <laughs> and then we had a guy who came up on those spring stilts, and he did the most consecutive backflips on stilts. And so it was just like, you know, most balloon dogs created in one minute. I mean, it was just like the creativity was just pouring out of all these people. It's, you know, it's a creative community, and people really seem to enjoy um, this open assignment. So. Um, our camp continued to grow, like we, we went back, I mean, we were there for five years from 04 until 08, and, you know, then we started to create leaderboards, and so we would have people see the other world records that existed, and now you've got people creating records, and you've got other people saying, like, wait a sec, like, the world record for, you know, the most quarters fit in a nose is only three? Like, get me some quarters, I want to beat that world record, and so that starts getting competitive, and, um, uh, you know, then we would come back the next year and people would run up and say like, where's the leaderboard? Do I still hold my world record from last year? Because it means so much to me. And like, no dude, someone beat it. And do you want to come up and, and, and uh, try and win it back? So, you know, the competition was growing, the creativity was blossoming, and it was just, it was just wonderful to see all this happening. Um, while, like during these years, this is kind of when Wikipedia was starting to revolutionize the encyclopedia and people were realizing, wow, there can be something much bigger and more community-driven and participatory than, um, uh, than the Encyclopedia Britannica. And, um, and with that kind of spirit, you know, as this project grew at Burning Man, there was, a, you know, the beginning thoughts of like, well, wait a sec, why does this have to just be in the desert, um, you know, five days a week, every single year? How on earth can this be put into the world at large? Um, and get everybody playing. So um, then I went to a summer camp in New Hampshire and spent a week doing it with kids. Just wanted to try it with a totally different community. And the kids were even more creative and more outrageous than the people at Burning Man. And um, it kept growing. So I met Corey uh, in 2006. And I had known his wife from my years in advertising. She's a photographer. and. We, we met here in San Francisco, they were visiting, we went out for dinner and then to see Ratatat at uh, the Great American Music Hall. Woo woo! And basically while the band was playing, like, you know, we were just, you know, I, I was all fired up. I just come back from Burning Man and I, and I knew, like, I knew that Corey was, I'll let him tell about his techni technological background, but um, I didn't really know many people in technology and so I, basically spent the night, you know, we just started talking about, like, um, how, if and how this thing could go onto the internet, so. Um, yeah, you, wanna... you know, and for me, it, it just sort of made perfect sense, and I, I kind of just, my, my immediate reaction was more about, like, yeah, wait a second, why does Guinness get to, why do a group of guys in England get to decide what world records should exist and what ones shouldn't exist? The whole reason the internet exists is for people to argue about stuff like that. Let's, and we have, obviously we live in the age of video and that's accessible to everybody now. And we put the two together and, you know, like we said, we, I didn't, we didn't even get to watch the concert. We were just talking about the idea the whole time, so. So, yeah, so then Corey went back to New York. I was still working here in San Francisco, and we became pen pals and started figuring out what the database was going to look like. And, you know, again, I'm technologically somewhat uh, uh, incompetent, so uh, Corey was the Zen master and patient Zen master as we, we started to build this thing together. Um, uh, I eventually quit here, and I moved back to New York for life reasons. And, um, but, you know, then obviously we, we started working more closely together and went into a shared office space. And we really bootstrapped this thing for a couple of years. Um, uh, I was doing some freelancing and advertising. Corey was working on, on an, another startup at, at the time. Um, 
but we just we just it was just like this big hobby that you know was just something we knew we wanted to put on the internet we didn't know if it was going to be you know our original aim was actually urdb the universal record database.org so we had a lo lots of debates about whether this thing should be for profit or whether this should be you know a, a, a non-profit or not for profit um, but we just knew you know we had 150 world records from burning man uh, a couple dozen from the summer camp in new hampshire and we just said like we got to put this thing on the internet at the very least for people to see these world records and hopefully we're going to be able to you know build tools so that everybody can play along and start seeing world records that they can beat that they think they can beat documenting themselves on video um, and uploading it um, and or saying i want to create a totally new world record myself so we built the thing for a couple of years and uh, launched in beta just under three years ago at the end of 2008 um, and the last three years has been like a, a crazy adventure. So we have a short brand video about Record Setter, which I think will kind of begin to fill you in on what's been happening, and then we can get into talking about the book and tell you some more about some amazing world records. You know what we need to do is audio. Mm -hmm. Will this audio work, you think? Yeah. We plug that in? All right. Oh, it sounds like it's going to work. <laughs> So yeah, that's that. In a nutshell, is uh, is is what we're building. So um, I don't know if you have had a chance to see the website, but you know it, it really is just um, you know, we, we have over ten thousand records now, um, primarily video, um, and we're really just trying to continue to lower the bar for setting a world record and um, changing them from something you read about in a book that comes out once a year to. Um, something that you can participate in and you know everybody from young kids to groups to you know companies and beyond can can get involved with so um, we were laughing this morning that um, you know we're a digital company and recordsetter.com is the core of what we're building and yet <laughs> it's this uh, book that gets us invited to come and speak at Google so um, <laughs> um, so we can um, uh, Do you want to talk about how, where the book came from? And sure. Um, yeah, so, you know, as this thing grew, I mean, you know, we, we've had, 
you know, we're still a very small team. We only have seven people in New York City. Um, we have some funding. We can happily answer questions about, you know, the business side. Or we're happy to talk about any side of the company that you'd like. But um, we've, thanks to some appearances on Jimmy Fallon and uh, other our live events and so forth, we talked to some book publishers and uh, teamed up with a company called Workmen, who are awesome, and um, spent the last couple of years um, building uh, this book. So um, it was a really interesting challenge. You know, I mean, people talk about like, would Wikipedia ever release a book? And it was kind of the similar challenge that we had of like, how do you with thousands of records choose what's the best stuff? And does it make sense to make a book? I mean, it, you know, a lo lot of interesting, um, a lot of interesting questions that we had to ask as we were producing this. Um, um, but, you know, we felt ultimately that, you know, print still is alive and um, this, you know, we're see we've been on tour across the country right now and we're seeing, like, especially kids and teenagers um, and uh, people in their 20s, 30s and 40s as well, but really still love reading books of world records and, um, yeah, so, so we felt it still made sense for us to actually put out a print book and we're going to be making this a series and get it into school classrooms and, and so forth. Um, we really tried to rethink what a book of world records is. Um, you know, obviously we love the Guinness Book and have seen, seen it for years, but um, we wanted to make something that wasn't just a book you would read, but it was actually filled with um, tips on how to set world records yourselves. And then there's uh, hundreds of these records begging to be set. Um, we'll get into some of our favorite records, um, but I just flipped open this page and a record begging to be set is the fastest time to Google every member of InSync. <laughs> so if anybody here in this uh, room would like to set a world record this weekend, document yourself on video Googling every member of InSync, and then um, we will add it to our database for other uh, InSync aficionados to uh, potentially Smart challenge. Slash Google aficionados. Um, so, you know, the, the book is filled with, like, right, a lot of world records. I mean, I think you guys are getting the spirit that we're much more open than any other world record organization. Um, we like to try not to judge people's categories. Um, our very simple rules are that your feed has to be quantifiable, breakable, and you have to provide sufficient media evidence. So, um, because we were coming to Google, we pulled up uh, the most medical symptoms Googled in 30 seconds. Uh, this is a woman, Bianca Fay, uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, she describes herself as a low-grade hypochondriac who delights in Googling minor bodily sensations after scaring herself into believing they might be the first signs of a serious illness. <laughs> Years of practice freaking out about suspected malignant moles that turned out to be drop flakes of chocolate, true story, gave her the confidence to set this record. Uh, perfectly healthy as she prepared to type in a litany of symptoms from, quote, funny poops to itchy ankles, she took a minute to reassure all viewers with words of calm. If any of these things are happening to you, just know I have been through them and am totally fine. So Bianca Googled uh, seven medical symptoms in 30 seconds. There are, we have criteria, like we definitely want to create legitimate rules that people have to follow so you may not so you must use google to perform the searches you may not use google's autocomplete feature anybody in the room working on the autocomplete project um, and search queries must refer to a medical symptom or complaint so um, if we have any hypochondriacs here who would like to have a go at beating that record i personally think that's kind of a beatable that's one beautiful. yeah um, you want to you want to choose a choose a favorite uh yeah well we have um we did a, a project with um, uh, Wyden and Kennedy up in Portland, and they set an amazing record for the, uh, I'm going to find the exact language, but the uh, longest office chair chain pulled by a motorcycle. So they have a motorcycle, a bunch of office chairs, pulled that down, <laughs> down the street of Portland, and then the most bizarre thing happened at the end. As they were preparing to do their record, Somebody noticed um, then quarterback Joey Harrington yeah. at the piano store across the street. <laughs> they invited him to join their record, and the office, the, the last chair is filled with Joey Harrington playing a keyboard as they go down the street being pulled by motorcycle. <laughs> it's amazing. And and you know what's so interesting is we see all like these records like this, and we say like that's an awesome, outrageous feat. But come on, like nobody's ever gonna, you know, that's not 
ever going to become competitive. But uh, that, while that record still stands, that then inspired um, the people at Jimmy Fallon on one of our appearances to set a record for the longest office chair train pulled by a golf cart. Um, they they were going to try and beat. They were going to try and beat the record, but they weren't allowed to bring a motorcycle into the studio. So then they tweaked it with a golf cart. And then a, uh, uh, a small town in Nova Scotia, Canada, um, they wanted, people love beating Jimmy Fallon's record. So then they decided to, um, to, to take down the record. So they, they beat his record and, uh, and pulled more uh, office chairs behind a, um, behind a golf cart. And, you know, the, the competitive element, I think, is something that we get really excited about. You know, sometimes people will say, are you guys just have that sort of youthful spirit of saying like, okay, everybody do something and we're gonna give everybody a gold medal. And certainly that's part of our spirit. Like we certainly recognize um, the power of holding a world record, that there's a um, real boost in self-achievement, uh, boost in self-esteem and a feeling of achievement that comes from that. But like we don't wanna just be a feel good thing and we love competition. You know, Nick mentioned, that I have set about a dozen records, and they've actually all been beaten now. And because <laughs> um, I'm the president of the company, and you know, when I put up a new record, it'll get taken down. But it's the first time it happened to me, it was a very surreal experience. I had set at Burning Man the world record for the most times whistling "Happy Birthday" in one minute, and you know, we had then we launched the site and we had up the video. And one day, a submission came in from this teenager jerk in San Diego <laughs> who had. Uh, fit in one more uh, happy birthday uh, rendition than me. But, but, but it's almost like somebody's covering your song and it's, a really, it's really like magical to watch these people create these really um, you know, long tail record categories and then watch them evolve into something. Um, you may have seen on the front of the book, uh, we have this guy here. This is one of the first submissions we ever got at Record Setter. It came in from Australia, a guy named Daniel Fowler. He set a world record for the most giraffe tattoos on a shoulder. And he sent us in a photo of him with one giraffe. And he said, like, all right, you've said that your rules are quantifiable, breakable media evidence. Like, this is all of that. It's, it's one. <laughs> um, and, you know, we laugh, but we're also like, he gets the spirit of this. Like, this is a total experiment. It's an ongoing work in progress. And he started the bar somewhere. And, and um, we thought that record was just going to sit. And then a... Um, it goes back to San Diego, a radio station in San Diego, they started doing Record Setter World Record Wednesdays. And one morning they said, okay, everybody, there's a record held by this guy in Australia named Daniel Fowler, who has one giraffe tattooed on his shoulder. We have brought in a local tattoo artist and will provide free tattoo to any listener who's willing to come in and get at least two giraffes tattooed on their shoulder. Um, you know, God bless San Diego, like about a half a dozen listeners called up, <laughs> me, me, free tattoo, like I got nothing going on today. Um, and this guy named uh, Mike McDonald, he took the day off of work, his girlfriend was kind of kind of ticked off, and, um, and he got three giraffes tattooed on his shoulder. Um, so then, you know, obviously the guy in Australia, Daniel Fowler, had his mind blown, like what's going on here? I just did this kind of as a joke, and now I've <laughs> spurred on. You know, to us, we always say that was a day where we said, you know, for better and for worse, this thing is working because people <laughs> are, you know, competing against each other in all these com totally new categories. Um, two months later, I came into our office in, in New York and like everybody was like all giddy and I was like, what's going on? What's going on? And it turned out that uh, Daniel Fowler, the original guy in Australia who had one giraffe tattoo, had gone out and he got three more giraffe tattoos uh, and sent us, you know, you can see him on the cover. He was just like, he could not have been more proud of the fact. It's like, it's the most cocky look I think I've ever seen a human being give. Um, and we were just down in San Diego and Mike McDonald is, is still like planning to, to read, you know, to take this record back. Um, <laughs> But you know, we also have, you know, and so we, we, ha we have, like we're so open. So like, we don't, we don't wanna just be ironic records. We don't wanna just be like stupid records. Like we have, um, we've just are discovering all these communities pe of people that never really fit into the Guinness box. Um, ranging from like a skee-ball tournament that loved 
that we would recognize all their feats as world records, like most, you know, ski, most balls rolled in 30 seconds or, or whatever. Um, we have um, these push-up champions around the world who are using our platform now and competing in categories like the most one-arm push-ups in one minute while wearing a 60-pound backpack. Um, we've, uh, we've worked uh, a bunch with charity, so we have, uh, I guess we can pull up the Livestrong, but we've, we've been, we've done a partnership. It's a break cancer. Oh, right. Um, we've done a, oh, there we go. Um, we've been doing a partnership with uh, Livestrong for the last uh, year plus. Um, this was a breast cancer related record. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, but most cigarettes ripped in half, and the longest drumming marathon to raise money for cancer research, and the um, fastest time for young adult cancer survivors and their supporters to pull an airplane 15 feet. So um, they've loved, Livestrong has, you know, they recognize that for years all they've offered are, you know, want to get involved, you have to bike across the country or run a marathon, and they're realizing that world records can be this new way to engage their community um, and, you know, people who may not be interested in, um, in you know running a marathon or biking four thousand miles, but want to get involved. So so we've been we've been working with them. Um, uh, the, a couple, uh, this is an amazing video. This is one of my favorite records. Um, well, there's a man. There's a bunch of good ones in here. This is you can see fastest time to solve two Rubik's cubes while playing Guitar Hero. You you guys want to see a peek of this? <laughs> this kid is a shredder. Set up here. There he goes. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but do, do, are any of you guys uh, Guitar Hero experts <laughs> slash uh, Rubik's Cube solvers? Because this could be a fun new weekend activity. Um, you know, and all, all these categories, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we see these things come in and we never know which ones are going to become competitive. Um, you know, Corey, I mean, talks about imagining the way that pole vault came to be an Olympic sport. And it probably just began with like a couple of dudes with a stick and a shrub and they were just saying, who can plant this thing and fling themselves over it? And, um, and they certainly were not thinking, like, this is going to someday be a global competitive sport in which there are going to be wind rules and you're going to have to use the right composition for your pole and on and on. And, you know, so all these categories, like, if you look at anyone as a standalone category, it might seem like a little bit frivolous. But, like, our spirit is, is like, no way. Like, the, the, you know, we'll see competition in... I mean, again, like from the giraffe tattoos to, um, oh, this is a, a great category uh, also in the book. It's the most time smiling while listening to Beat It. And this, and this has became a competitive category. This, it was a girl in, a, in Philadelphia, Allison Harris, who right after Michael Jackson passed away, she wanted to, you know, pay tribute through a world record. So she made, I, I'm, gonna pull up, I'm gonna pull up this video. She made this, because I just think it's so charming. She, she made this, uh, let's see, she made this video, and then it, and then it got beaten by another fan. Uh, there we go. Slowest. So this, let me just find the original one. This is the current record holder, Krista, and she's featured in the book. Here's Allison. Time's smiled while listening to Michael 
Jackson song Peter. <laughs> yeah, I know my glasses. <laughs> it becomes an endurance challenge. It's a four minute song as well. Very sore facial muscle, facial muscles. So you get you get the idea, but you know I, I, again all these categories like you just never know what's going to inspire people and where these where these things are going to lead to. Um, a, a category in the book which uh, has become kind of a global phenomenon is the longest high five. So these two guys in Canada in Toronto who call themselves the Record Collection, they lined up what, like about three miles apart uh, in downtown Toronto on Young Street. And they made rules that you had to keep your hand up the entire run, which is um, not easy to keep your arm up for this length of time. And they had cameras follow them, and they just ran towards each other and completed <laughs> what was literally the longest high five. And it was such a cool video, such a fresh idea, like so simple. Um, and then that inspired uh, two guys in Australia um, to step up and beat the world record. And then they... An equally entertaining video. Well. <laughs> Yes. Um, there was some controversy in their attempt because one of the guys on his run, he gave a quick high five to a passerby. <laughs> so then there was like heated debate in our community about whether that should make it, you know, <laughs> he kind of cheated, but we, we let the, rec we, the existing record holders <laughs> agree that it should be accepted. Um, and then it recently got beaten by a pair of uh, guys in Illinois. And uh, now we're, you know, the guys in Toronto are training, the guys in uh, Australia are training. So, I mean, to me, that's like an example of like, okay, this thing could turn into a global phenomenon. And, you know, we have 10,000 of these things and people are creating new categories every day. So, um, yeah, so <laughs> we're seeing a lot of fun things. Um, Should we leave? I think we've got about five minutes or so. Can you take some questions? Sure. And, that, and then we're going to get you guys to set a world record. We have one we'd like for you guys to set. So, but please, let's do a couple of questions. <coughs> Sure. Uh, the question was uh, whether we're for profit and whether we're working with brands. The answer is yes and yes. Um, yeah, a big part of our business model is built around um, not just traditional advertising, but creating branded content. So, you know, an example we always give is the fastest time to open a bag of Skittles and sort them by color was a record category that somebody just created and that's been beaten five or six times. Um, so now we just did a big partnership with Stride Gum where there were a hundred long lasting world records that were pushed out to their Facebook fans, two and a half million fans, one record a day, and we got over a thousand UGC videos in a three month period. And um, so yeah, we do live events, but the core of our, of our brand partnerships are digital. Yeah, we, we, we debated the nonprofit thing for a while and then I read I think it was musicbrains.org, if you're familiar with them, they're the non, a non-profit around music. And the guy was saying he was going to try to go to a conference but needed somebody's couch to sleep on. And we said, all right, we can't, we can't do that. We, we need to be able to feed ourselves and grow a team. So, Hey, Michael. Yeah, I mean, this, this is definitely an issue. We're, uh, sorry, the question is uh, what kind of liabilities issues we're dealing with. Um, it's certainly an, a, a topic that we're very conscious of and aware of. Um, we have a set of principles that we push out to our community. Um, the, the first and biggest one being um, uh, don't hurt yourself, don't hurt others, don't hurt the environment. Um, you know, we're not the hugest fans of consumption eating records and you know, we say very explicitly, if you have any concerns about the safety of one of your records, please contact us first or talk with the most responsible person that you know. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think we, we try to curate the site in a way that will let some of those records live in the corners, but we really are trying to create a culture based around, um, you know, world records that are truly raising the bar of, of human achievement in some manner. I think there's also something to be said for, you know, in a lot of ways, one of the main differences between us and 
And Guinness is the, you know, Guinness, those, those are Guinness's records. Like, that's their body that they've kind of sanctioned. This is a record that we want people to break. And I think our model is that, you know, the records belong to the people that are creating and setting the records. So, I mean, I think the legal distinction may not be, may not matter, but I think there, there's something to, like, when you set a record, set a world record, that's, that's your property. That's your thing. It's your, you know, whoever um, sets a new record gets to set the rules. So they're sort of owning, owning how it will get shaped. You know, for things like the book, obviously, we're, we're not going to put something dangerous in there. But. So for time, I think we're, we're going to set a record. We probably should get to it. Sure. So since we're here at Google, uh, we looked through and we found some amazing Google records we have. I mentioned the medical symptoms one. We have the... Um, we have like most uh, most I think go emails in a in a unread emails I think, um, but this is one that we thought we could beat, and I think we're going to have enough people here to do it. Um, this is the largest group simultaneously searching the same thing on Google. Okay. This was <laughs> this is a summer camp, right. a tech camp are. in Arizona. searching ID tech. So here we go. Let's all type it in. All right. So this is the category that's been created. We were going to look. To, do any of you guys have a suggestion of something? And does everybody have, I, I, I would imagine everybody has a device of some sort, <coughs> a computer, or uh, how many, can we make sure we're going to get 17 people we can participate? Um, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, pull some people out from the hallway if we need to. Or, or we can, or, or, well, let's, we all right, let's do it. So we, okay, and who has a, are you going to shoot that on, that on your phone? Uh, I can, yeah. Okay. Tell them they'll get a, a, a world record holder patch if they participate. Uh, we need, and we need a word. I know. Yeah, we need a, a term to search for. Ideally something, yeah, all right, someone you need. What, what's like a uh, what's like the name of a conference room here that is? Do you have any clever? So, Hi, Michael. Rusty Badger, or something like that. <coughs> Dirty Harry. Dirty Harry. You guys want to do that? So how about we, we, we can search for the meaning of the word Google. G O G O G O L. There we go. Good suggestion. There we go. It's your record, so. <laughs> I'm ready. So, what what are we searching for? The me meaning of Google spelled the mathematical way? Or just yeah, search for G O G O L. Okay. So let's wait until we have. Yes. I'm ready to go. <clears throat> okay, we're here at Google San Francisco trying to beat an existing record setter world record for the most people to simultaneously search the same thing on Google. The current record is held by a technology camp in Tempe, Arizona. This summer they got 16 people to gather together and all Google something at the same time. We are now trying to get more than 16 people to get together and Google something at the same time. Suggestion from the room was to Google G-O-O-G-O-L, the, the original word Google. So if everybody could prepare um, the uh, word Google and then... Um, I will come around and confirm that we have all searched. Okay. Right. Yes, the most people to simultaneously Google the, Google the same thing at the same time. Everyone ready? You want to count us down? Now? Let's do this. Whenever you're ready, let's make the Googling happen. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Let's see some of these. Let's see some screens. All right, Google. Google, yes, this is looking kosher. So, oh, we are looking good. Let's see these screens. <laughs> Lots of screens. Oh yeah, this is this is looking good. Dan, you need to search. You need I think, to search. I'm what? 16. Oh, okay, hold on. But that one was beaten recently, actually. So. I'm just a little bitter about that. 
I'm going to add in my search. Hold on. Oh, oh. okay. G O O G O L. And it's coming, it's coming. But how do you how do you know? How do we know what? Like what if maybe more than this group of people have searched like Justin Bieber? Right, so like right. So our there, there so go. there's 17. the spirit. So uh, uh, we're, we're, we're going to wrap up, but that's an excellent question that was asked. Like, how do we know that, we've, that this is an existing world record? I mean, our general spirit is that it's a record until proven otherwise. So if a group of Bieber fans see this record and they say, like, what? At, you know, Bieberfest 09, we had 300 people Google Justin Bieber is cute at the same time. Great. Like, give us the video evidence, submit it to Record Setter, and we'll, you know, recognize your feet. So it, it's, it's all a work in progress, and that's, you know, it, it, it really is such a pleasure that we get to make this our full-time job now. We're, we're just, like, we couldn't be having more fun, and we really feel we're doing something that's really interesting and exciting and participatory and, you know, ties into all the things that make the Internet wonderful. So um, thanks for coming, and, um, you know, we'll stick around if you guys have any more questions. Um, come get a patch, a world record holder. Yes. Oh, wow.